record. Sorry. So you are reading that book. I I'm listening to it, but uh, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how I study. It has yes. to be audible <laughs> or it doesn't happen for me. Right, right. But the Lincoln hypothesis, that's what you're listening to. Yeah. So and good. you you love it. I love it so much. Yeah. It, it's the putting the history of the country all together and then connect it so that boys and I do a timeline and oh. we we have this book that's the timeline and we um take the pictures from the my america storybook and put them in there and so to put abraham lincoln with joseph smith and like match those up in the timeline and he makes me want to go back and do other things like church history versus american history I'm sure somebody's done it, but I probably need to do it myself to like fully wrap my head around it. Isn't it fun though to do those timelines and just connect different completely things that you never saw as being related, but connecting them and making those uh those relationships like composers and artists that lived at the same time or what was happening in history during the times that they were doing whatever they were doing. I love that. <clears throat> to a BYU speech on my walk this morning. I did not finish it, but she's talking about um, like American history, how we went from like a revolution and then 50 years later, how we were like going down a bad path. And then somehow we got united again. And now we're back to where we're very divided. And um, so that was fascinating because it goes into like link abraham lincoln's time where in our country fought the and um you know freeing all the people and making so how joseph smith helped with the 13th and 14th amendments i know to and making it so that the federal government can um First, our constitution um, in the state and how that created religious freedom for everybody. So black freedom, religious freedom, women's rights all came about all at the same time. And um, and that's when our country made like this big turn. And now yeah. we're fighting them all. <clears throat> right. At least Right. You have those, you have that pattern that ha has happened. Well, and it happened um, also in the sixties, you know, when you have people who lived during that time, they felt very similarly to how we feel right now. And things kind of came around again. There was some healing that took place. <clears throat> some, probably some repentance <laughs> that um, took place, changes of heart. And uh, now we need that again. Yeah, I, I find that book very fascinating. And that's interesting that you found a speech that was kind of went along with that too. It's so good to learn history. We need to learn history. We've got to know it. Otherwise we have no reference point. We have nothing to, to learn from and then look at where we are and say, oh, okay, this path is not good. We need to redirect, we need to fix that. So our children need to learn history and through stories is the best way. I love these things that I'm learning now as an adult um, about history through the stories of people's lives. I love that. So I'd love to know anything you guys have been learning, reading, um, finding that just, ah, that you think, oh, I love this. I don't, I don't remember this from when I was in school or, or I remember mm -hmm. a little bit, but now I'm building on that. I would love to learn about that from you. <laughs> some of my like i was responding to one of the moms on in the mighty network and um it, she was talking about abraham lincoln and i was thinking back and wondering when did i develop this relationship with him you know when did i who introduced me to him i don't remember i don't know if it was my mom or if it was um bye catherine have fun or if it was a teacher, like one of my teachers, 
you know, we used to talk about those things more mm -hmm. often, you know, that used to be a bigger deal to celebrate those presidents, learn about those things. But wherever it was, whatever happened, I, I felt so connected to him. I thought he's my favorite president. You know, I really love Abraham Lincoln um, just as a girl. And then as I've grown, anytime I've run across him, I've wanted to learn more. So two things from that, just that it is so much fun to learn about people when you actually get to get into their lives, things that they did, things that they thought, um, the way they handled a tough situation, things like that. But the other thing is that somewhere in my past, a little seed was planted and it has just grown and grown and grown. And at the time, it had to have just been a little thing, just a little introduction to a man named Abraham Lincoln. Um, and now I, I have had these incredible experiences as I've learned about him and then really sweet and tender experiences as I've bumped into him again and again. So don't, um, don't discount the small thing and simple things that you're doing. Even though you're not seeing any fruit from a lot of the seeds that you're planting right now, please take heart and um, be patient and see what comes. I think you'll be very pleasantly surprised down the road. Any thoughts, any sharing you want, anything you want to share about things you're learning, other things you're talking about or learning or experiencing? maybe some rough spots, how you got through them or help. You know, I'm in a rough spot and I'm not quite sure how to get through it. This right here is the little cockroach that gets passed around our house. It's plastic, of course, um, but people like to everyone, you know, there's a nice pause in between, but then somebody will put it somewhere where you lift something up, you move something and oh, so. I've tucked it away so that no one can do that to me. <laughs> do you do things like that in your family? Just silly things that, I don't know, that you kind of notice that your kids like and helps them feel connected and, or just creates those silly, um, funny memories together. There's so many little things that we don't count as being effective, good, nurturing, bonding, and connecting things with our families. As moms, we I think we need to look at those things more clearly and be able to, at the end of the day, count some of those out and say, okay, today was a good day. We did a couple of those things. I'd love to have you mom share if there are things that you're thinking about, things that have happened with you. And Cassie, it's been fun to see your posts lately. Your family is growing and it is so sweet. Mm, cute. Cassie lives in a beautiful place. She's over on the coast. And a house that out on her, um, I don't know where, oh, are you, you're in your yard. Out on her little balcony, she can see the water. <clears throat> cute. Oh, you cute little people. Oh, I like your gate. That's fun. Oh, look at that weather. It's just beautiful. We have reached spring, my friends. Are you finding joy seeing the trees leafing out and the buds opening up? Oh, I am. Um, I think I needed that. It felt kind of like a long winter. Not that there's anything wrong with winter, but hey, Lindsay. Hi. I was, I can't tell if I'm on or not. <laughs> I can't tell if my video's on. Um, <laughs> My, my thing for history hasn't really been too much on people of the world, but it's been more on my own family history. And just mm. that's really just been in my heart lately is just figuring out where I come from and who I can connect to 
and then add it into like you guys are saying the timeline it's been fun because I bought a timeline book on Amazon and I've been adding their information in it because it's relevant to me so that's been a lot of fun okay I love that and you got a big smile from Laura because that is oh. her that is her happy place <laughs> oh and I'm not very good at um I'm not very good at family history at all but just little things here and there I'm trying to figure out but aren't the stories and a very important part of family history? Laura's nodding. Yes, she's driving. So, but she's nodding. Yes. I'm um, Lindsay. I think that's fabulous. I love that. And I love that that immediately came to your heart when we were talking about history. Yeah, Laura. As in their stories, it's made them come up again and we learned, we, the people that we've learned about in their stories, and to us, that it's just been priceless, absolutely priceless. And so, really not good finding people or doing anything in Family Search, but Family Search has changed much for us because we've been able to learn the stories that other people have put in. I love that. Laura has some really great experiences. You're kind of in a rough spot, Laura. So it was kind of going, coming in, going in and out. We got most, most. Sorry. And I actually have to go. I have to deliver something real quick, but I'll try to jump back on. But okay. um, bye. Oh, so hopefully she'll be back to share. But she created. Um, a book of stories and that uh, before they went on a trip and they went to some of these places where these people in her family history lived and then when they were in those places she would read those stories and oh, i think that's really neat and her kids have have really connected with some of those um members of their family yeah lindsay I didn't have anything. Sorry. Oh, and I can't oh. figure out how to do zoom on my phone. Sorry. So no, you're uh, fine. It's not easy. You just hit, you kind of tap the screen and usually the options come up, but okay. I struggle with that too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Michelle, you're here. I'm glad you're here. Did you have something to share too? <laughs> She's like, come on, get that button. And I can't, there, there we go. go. I'm the same way. I'm on my phone, and so I'm always trying to like tap and. Um, no, I was just listening. I just can't. I just popped on when Laura was speaking about. I I missed the first part where, um, you guys were talking about Lincoln, and I just think it's cool it, with history how you can make all these connections with people like you were talking about some um artists that were alive at the same time and we are Audrey and I've been studying kind of just the 1800s and it's amazing how many people's lives have overlapped or actually have um uh they've actually known each other during that those times so I just think it's really cool so I, I love that you are doing that with her. I love that. And isn't that fun as an adult to learn these things, the things and making those connections that you didn't make when you were younger? Right. Um, for example, so uh, I teach the, a sign language class on Wednesdays to a group of homeschool girls. And we were reading a book about Helen Keller. And what's cool about Helen Keller if you don't already know, is that Mark Twain actually had a big part. It was Mark Twain and also um, Alexander Graham Bell had a big part in helping her to receive a good education. Oh, wow. That's interesting. That's a connection I didn't know. And a lot of people don't know that Alexander Graham Bell, um, his mother was deaf and the reason what led him to the invention of the telephone was that he was trying to come up with um, 
an, an invention to help his mother be able to communicate and to hear. And that's actually what led him to the discovery of the telephone. Oh. Because Andrew Graham Bell was a teacher of the deaf prior to, um, you know, I mean, he was an inventor, yes, but he was first a teacher of the deaf. Oh, I did not know that. That's really interesting. So maybe trying to just amplify sound or something like that. Yes. Oh, yeah. And Mark Twain's involvement was what again? Well, he had a big part in helping her um, to get to uh, the right doctors. Um, uh, financially, he helped and just getting her into the, the uh, to good schools. Don't you think those connections would make history more interesting to kids? Yes. So, you know, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, I went and got my hair done a few weeks ago. And with all the stuff that I learned, I was sharing it with the lady that does my hair. And Audrey and I had been reading about um, Annie Oakley. And what's cool about Annie Oakley is there's, again, there's just so many connections with other people. And I I was telling my hairdresser about Annie Oakley and she just stopped and looked at me and she said, you've been a history teacher because when you talk, I want to learn so much more. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought it really comes down to just getting to know people and their stories. Like you were saying, actually not just memorizing dates because that has no meaning to us. Mm -hmm. But when you actually get to know people and their stories, it obviously it gives us meaning. Right. I think that, you know, that phrase, uh, making the connections is such a huge part of that. I, I love how that makes a difference. And your and your hairdresser is right. Like we seriously, the things that we're learning, just these little bits and pieces, if we just share that with people, I mean, we think it's such a tiny thing and we know and feel like I know this much. Right. You know, and I think that's why we hesitate to share because we think, oh, I just found this cool thing. And I know that these two fact, these two people are related. That's all I know. Like there's so much more, or I don't even remember the rest of what I read, but I remember that part because I thought it was really cool. And we think, oh, that's too tiny to share, but it's not, it's not. And I think people need to hear those things. They, you need, we have an opportunity to bring some good things into people's lives and help them maybe plant the seed for them to create a little bit of curiosity, a little bit of wonder about the world that, you know, we yes. have right now. And, you know, going back to Abraham Lincoln, I, uh, you know, his, his wife gets a really bad rap. Mm -hmm. um, but if you, I thought, you know, I bet now, I bet today in today, today's medical world, if we were to go back, I bet she had some um, mental illness uh -huh. that, and she did, she, they say she's, oh, now I can't remember, you guys will have to look it up, but she had some kind of, she suffered from like an iron deficiency. And that's kind of what made her kind of go crazy. And they didn't realize that back then. So some of the simple things that we know now that could be fixed, um, I just thought, oh, I bet Aver I bet his wife was not such a terrible person. Um, anyway, so I tried to look at more into that, into her life, and uh, I just thought that was interesting. Right. I remember, and I can't remember the details either, but I remember just recently reading that perhaps, the, you know, those things could have been helped if not completely helped significantly if she had lived in a different time. Right. So I love that. I love that you learned that. So I, I think that just supports and feeds this idea of go out and connect with another person and share, share these just little tidbits that you're learning and say, oh, this is not much, but I just learned this really cool, interesting thing the other day. Did you know that and just like you did, Michelle, I love that. I love that you did that. Seven, it is so good to see your face. How are you doing? How is that little baby? Speedy just woke up. <laughs> oh, she is almost nine months old. That's crazy. Oh, I can't believe that. And you have all, all girls now, is that right? 
two boys and two girls oh wow how did i miss the boys <laughs> yeah the boys are the crazy ones it's so it <laughs> kind of is challenging but <laughs> it is true that to think <laughs> we celebrate chinese new year so this year is the year of rabbit then i was telling my daughter next time we celebrate the year of the rabbit you're going to be 19 years old that's just blew my mind and all of a sudden i'm like okay the little boys are noxious but we will cherish this time because <laughs> they only live once this age so. yes yes how old are the boys so they're uh the older one is almost turning five in june the younger one is three. Oh yeah right yeah, and sometimes, you know what, boy teenagers can be so awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty smooth sailing. <laughs> and they yeah. usually love their mamas, so. Mm, yeah, they're actually sweet. Yeah, my younger one is a little bit more, uh, like, emotionally, uh, he's more dramatic. So we're trying to help, because me and my husband, I think we're both people that, I don't know, like, when it comes to big emotions, you just go either shut down or run away. I don't know. Is there something, because we're both kind of Asian and I think in the culture, you're not supposed to be, especially for boys. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of ingrained in his subconsciousness as well. Yeah. Interesting. All the, yeah, there's so much to that, to the culture, isn't there? Mm. Yeah. That's smart of you to just be aware of that and see how you might be able to work with that. Yeah. Ah, oh, well, it's super good to see you. That just makes me happy. Lindsay Watkins, were you going to share? You got on to, okay, you're just there. I'm so happy that you're there. I love that you're all on camera. I love seeing what's going on. It's so much fun. So yes, can we be brave and share a little bit, you know, just share these little tidbits of things that we're learning? Because I, I promise as you do it, either you'll connect with a person because they'll say, yes, I knew, I knew that, or I just read that or something. And isn't that so interesting? And then, you know, you'll spark a little conversation or they won't know that. And they'll, it, depending on where they're at, either they'll think, oh, that's so interesting. How fun, how wonderful, or, oh, I don't know. They'll respond some positive way or their hearts have not been warmed. They've been in this cold state for a really long time, but you might have just added a teeny tiny bit of warmth, you know, just to, to start that process of thawing. <laughs> and, well, we really need that. And I was just going to ask something. I think sometimes a little bit of warmth is just the perfect amount of warmth. Sometimes if you give too much, sometimes people just, get, they just turn away from it but maybe what you have is just the right amount. I love that. I'm writing that down. I love that. And I, I, cause I would obviously be the one to, you know, stoke the fire and like burn the person, you know, out of and some people need that too. <laughs> but, but I love that thought that, you know, if you're feeling like, Oh, but I'm just, you know, it's just going to be a little bit, Oh, that might be the exact perfect thing. I love that. Thanks for sharing that. Well, my heart's all warm and fuzzy because I've just spent three and a half weeks holding my grandchildren. So two of two of the three, oh, and a brand new baby. So I have a little toddler that would come to my room every morning, just little, you know, hear her little feet coming down the hallway and knock on grandma's door and come in, get in bed with me. <laughs> oh, that was so much fun. And so my son sends me a picture yesterday of her after, you know, I'm in the air and landing in LA and I get this picture of her um, walking down the hallway toward my bedroom um, after her nap. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, ouch. So anyway but it was super fun because she just turned two and now she knows grandma and um we have a different relationship and so that that was really fun and that's priceless and then just to hold that sleeping baby with all those little baby sounds and the little eye fluttering smell. what no go ahead baby smell i love baby smells my husband yes precious yes. right there's nothing like that it's just so sweet. And then just to watch my son and his sweet wife be parents and to see that starting all over again and happening. I always, I didn't, I didn't really 
in my younger years ra raising my children, I didn't look forward to grand being a grandparent because I think mostly what I heard was, oh yeah, it's so great because you get to hug them and, and spoil them and everything and then give them back to their parents when they cry. And I didn't, I didn't like that idea because I didn't, I didn't feel that way about parenting about my children. And so I thought, oh, I don't, that's not how I would see it. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I didn't connect with it. Like I just didn't, there wasn't anything that I was looking forward to. And now, oh, it's so wonderful. And not because I can go away and leave them to their parents, but because you get to see it happening a second time and they're connected to you. And it's an even deeper thing. It is just, it's really sweet. There's something about those family connections. So anyway, sorry. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, I'm already looking forward to it. Good. I hope so. It is so wonderful. Anyway, and then it also reminded me that being a mother is hard. It's it's hard. It's wonderful and beautiful, but it is a lot of work. It is hard. And I think the hardest thing is sometimes you think you're the worst person in the world. <gasps> right. Right. So here's the thing. I was having a conversation with my sweet daughter-in-law and um, trying to encourage her to accept when when people that you trust contact you and say, hey, could I come pick up, you know, the baby, you know, or can I come hold the baby for you and play with the toddler while you get something done or while you sleep, right? Those things that we say, oh, no, I'm fine <laughs> when we're not fine. Um, it, and it's just so hard to say yes to those things. And I, and I said, because me, I'm watching her and thinking, you're amazing, you're doing a great job, but, but I know that would be helpful. Like, I know that would make a difference. And I, I want you to say yes, so that you don't have those feelings of just like, oh, this is hard. I'm going to do it, you know, but it's hard. Um, and you have those moments where you feel kind of alone. And you're not, and you know you're not, and you do all the talking in your head to help yourself feel better and move forward and everything. But anyway, my point is, I was talking to her and saying, okay, picture your daughter. I mean, she's just two now, but picture her as a mom and picture her feeling the way you feel. Now, what do you want her to do? How do you want her to respond to that sweet offering of a little tiny bit of help? And um, it changed things. You know, it, I mean, she's closer, right? We're, we're still going to struggle with that because we have this built-in cultural thing of like, I, I've got to do it. I've got to handle it on my own. And I don't know where that comes from. I, I don't know why, because we used to have the multi-generations, right? You had grandma aunts you know, um, around in a, in a household or on some land, whatever it was, but they were around. And they supported each other. And even in some cultures, it's really common to, for, um, well, in fact, Seven, I don't know if you uh, Even in Chinese culture, you're right. Tell me about it. Yeah, basically, um, for like before mother gives birth and afterwards, they at least take care of you for a month. And then yeah. even afterwards, sometimes the, the grandparents play a huge role in rearing the child. Okay, I read that just recently and i thought that was so beautiful what a beautiful way to respect motherhood <laughs> and this brand new beautiful baby that has come into the world and what i found what i found many times so i won't state a specific time or or place or anything but um is people are well where's mom is it when she coming back when she when's she gonna you know when are we gonna see that baby or when's and then um yeah we'll take meals in for a week or so i mean they don't really need it after that they've got you know whatever the reasons are you know she's fine she's gonna be fine i mean we all have to do it or whatever whatever those things are and i think wait right. why not why not so tell do you know more can you tell me more seven about that i just I'm fascinated by that idea that it's okay to do that or no, this is what we do. This is, this is how we do it. I know cell phone. And there was one thing. Um, so basically the typical postpartum care is 
they wanted the mom to get rest and basically to try not try not to work her body because it needs recovery. I know, like over here, definitely people are thinking like it, like like it doesn't really matter. Like after you give birth, what you do? It's funny. This is one thing that's kind of interesting that they try not to let them touch coat water. It's like warm. I don't know. There's something to the culture where they think it's good for the woman's body, especially uterus and abdominal like the part of the body to be warm mm -hmm. so they try to have them stay away from cold or icy water um and then for food like for each week there's a different types of not different type like for the beginning it's best if it's less greasy or salty you mm -hmm. know that kind of thing and then it kind of later on you can have more food that's more nutrition loaded to kind of re replenish the body and Mm. And I do, I do like the part where emotionally they try to, that's helpful as well to have someone around. Um, yeah, I feel like it is true that they, they really stress that. And it's interesting when I was in college, one of my professors said that he read a research where they studied how these things are done, like postpartum care for some cultures like this one he mentioned was Chinese culture, but he said the research was saying that the body, it actually makes sense for this, like either nutrition or care for the mom to have that. Um, I can't remember the exact thing that he said, but he reads a lot of research. So that was cool that for me to learn that even the Western world people are starting to recognize it is not like something that's overrated. Like it is necessary for moms to have extra care after they gave birth. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Right, it's kind of looked upon as if it's like over pampering, over indulgent or something like that. Right. You know, like the mom's being a baby or something if that's happening. And I thought, oh my goodness. I Because, okay, how many times have you heard, well, um, in some cultures, the women just go squat behind a tree, deliver the baby, and then walk back five miles to camp? Oh. Okay, thanks for that. What was the point of that? Why did you tell me that? I anyway, I just I love this idea that um, there's a culture that supports women to that on that level, right? That it's no, 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 no. We take care of you. You let your body look at what our body just did. So you let your body heal and prepare to be to you know take care of this this sweet new baby and we will we will help you through that you know we'll help you take care of the baby we'll help you get your sleep we'll help with your nutrition we'll keep you warm and cozy and all these things i think that's beautiful i think that's a wonderful acknowledgement of this incredible thing that that is bringing a life into the world yeah seven well i just thought of something else and some older like ladies in the culture that my culture have shared something with me where they're saying that um, even though you don't see the effects right after like birth or maybe even five, 10 years, but if in that period of time, postpartum recovery, if you ne neglected basically the things that you, you can do better, actually later on, you could have like illness and things related to like woman issues. I was like, oh, I never thought about that. Cause it's true. Like you don't see the effect. I, I can still do things. I mean, you can push your body, you don't feel that, but you actually would have some things later on. So it's actually pretty, like for me, because they're at that age and they're telling me about it. And also I learned about in India, they actually do 40 days. I was, I never knew about that until one of my friends told me probably a few months ago. Oh, okay. That's super interesting. And I also know that in India, they do the infant massage and, oh, yeah. and you're taught about you're taught or you have you, the teachings are um that this child this little infant just had this rude awakening this this, mm -hmm. this very harsh transition from this warm and comfortable soothing cozy place listening to mother's heartbeat you know and all these things and um and you're so infant massage is to help 
transition that baby back. And, and they're like, they, I read a book about it. I loved it. It was full of pictures. You know, these mamas are just sitting on a mat on the ground and they've got kind of their legs open. The baby's there in between their legs, right there, right next to their bodies. And the mothers have got, you know, natural oils and they're just rubbing this baby down and massaging the baby and everything. And sometimes the babies are just crying, but eventually they learn that that this is a positive thing and you and most of the time it's a very calming thing it becomes a very calming thing for the babies i think that also is this wonderfully respectful um way to approach these babies and that transition that they make and i think about us western world you know boom get that baby out and even a lot of times never mind i won't even go into that but um get that baby out and and then put them in a car seat and hold them like this, you know? And um, I mean, if that's your thing, sorry, <laughs> but like, if you're ever around me, you'll probably hear me say, what is this all about? Why are they out here? It's kind of like, ew, ew, <laughs> let's hold them over here. Everybody. Like sometimes it, it's because you want to have that car seat, right? Wherever you are for the baby to nap in or whatever, because that's that works best for you or whatever. But even the car seats, I mean, I hold them like this. <laughs> As if I have to take a car seat somewhere. I just, that doesn't, I don't know. That like the baby wearing, I wore my babies, you know, until they were old. I nursed them until they were old, like all the things. Because I'd read about some other cultures and I thought, yes, this speaks to me. I, I don't know. I think it just is part of that whole bonding with your baby. It's skin on skin, like all of that. I'm, I'm such mm. a hippie. Me too. <laughs> my little Asian hippie friend, right? <laughs> we're hippies in all cultures I, and you know it's funny that that's given that sort of negative um oh melanie's a hippie too negative uh vibe right but it's such a beautiful thing to be willing to be more in, in more in contact with nature and with god and i don't know with all the beautiful things yeah like revert, revert back to how things are yeah yeah I think we kind of long for those simpler things and those connections. Oh, Michelle's outside. That's the same sky I'm seeing. I love it. I mean, close. We're about 40 minutes away from each other. So wow. it's kind of cold. Really? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I just want to share with one thing. Okay, you muted again accidentally, maybe unless you were muting on purpose while you grabbed that. Oh yeah, I'm using the function where you press the space bar to talk because my kids can scream anytime, but I guess you don't mind. <laughs> so this is a little thing I got uh, from, it's a place in Utah called Thanksgiving Point. Yeah. There's a place that's Ashton Garden. We went to the Tulip Festival. I just want to share a moment that just like, I saw those like, oh, perfect. So we went on a whole trip and then after we we're done, we we're just sitting at the entrance where you, go out to the to the garden and this breeze just I just feel like oh wow this is amazing like after a walk in the nature I mean oh I want to share something else was the weather it's I feel so alive it's now oh it's now finally warm we can go outside a lot more I mean I should go outside more even if it's cold but I've been in Hawaii for the longest time so we're so spoiled anyway but it's so nice to just to, to see the nature and have, see how, how happy the kids are. And that wind, I just, I don't know, it's, there's something about it. Maybe it's Hawaii, I don't know, the breeze. So, cause this one says laugh, laugh with the wind. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, what interpretation you, you can have from all of you, but I just wanted to remember that feeling of how nice it is just to get out there and feel the nature. I love that. I love that, that, um, Sometimes when we are, when we're relaxed enough or feeling carefree for a moment or something, when right. nature can call us out, right? Like we, we've just got to get outside. I got home last night and I came inside and I dropped off my bags and everything. And I was um, being encouraged to go get something to eat, you know, come sit down and everything. I thought, I just have to go outside first. I just have to go outside. And I just went and walked around my yard and just, I got just a few little leftover um, 
orange tree blossoms. I missed that. That's my favorite part of the year. I missed it. I just got that tail end. I just found a few on the tree and I just gathered them up and just stood out there and oh, just smelled them and walked around, checked out everything. Just, I, and it doesn't happen very often. I get busy and I feel like, oh, I need to be responsible, you know, but that times, those times when, when we just, we can't help it. We just have to get outside. And then you have experiences like that. And I kind of think of it as being kissed by the wind, you know, and it, those breaks yes. just kind of, you know, just kind of fly by. And That's I don't a beautiful know. description. But anyway, I love that. Oh, and I think that's, you know, Heavenly Father trying to say, look, look, look. <laughs> look around you open up there's so many beautiful things here i want you to know i want you to be reminded all the time that i love you and i just i think we need to be open to that and i don't have any freaky weird views about um you know i i believe that we have a heavenly mother you know but i i also believe that that's a maybe something that we should be very respectful about, you know, as we consider that or, or refer to that or anything, but, but in my little, my little tiny mother heart, I think she probably helped plan all these beautiful things. You know, she probably said, Ooh, and you should have that color and you should have this design and you should have this thing. They'll love that, you know, something, I don't know, but it just, I think I, I, or at least they were inspired by her. Right. So anyway, we just need to think more kindly about ourselves and be more nurturing to each other. If you have opportunities to nurture or help a young mother, uh, that would be so good. There's a, <laughs> there's a young mother, new mother that I know, and they have um, in their church, they have um, groups of women who go and visit each other. And um, and in this area, they just have a group. Of, they call it a ministering group. And so that whole group ministers to each other, which I do think is a lovely idea. My other daughter, oh, I sort of just gave that away. But anyway, my other daughter had that, a situation similar. But in this one, it's like the five or six new moms in the ward. So they, like, they get the message, okay, so-and-so just had a baby and she could really use some help to all the moms with little toddlers and babies or expecting nauseous morning sick, you know, mothers <laughs> like, um, could you think that through like to the, just, just one step beyond this? Like, how is that going to work? Okay, great. We can have play dates together at the park, but what about when she needs some help? Any one of those moms, like, and like one of those moms is having a tough time right now. And, and so the message came in, Hey, so and so could use a meal, or she really would need. It would be great if somebody could come pick up her toddler. To the mom who has a four-week-old baby and a two-year-old toddler. Okay, I'll get on that. How are you going to do that? You know, so so maybe you have some situa situations around you where you could look and don't assume that somebody's already taking care of that mom. You know, see if maybe there's something something a little extra you can do that's not on the list of, you know, uh, of what other people think she needs, but maybe you feel a little prompting, like, oh, I could probably do a little something for her. Anyway. Well, Lori, I really need to ask you about that because our award has, like, every, we have new babies almost, like, every month. Like, yeah, like, it's crazy because the population in our ward is mostly this, like, age where people have babies. Yeah, <laughs> she's like mute on off on off depending on whether the kids are talking you're so funny seven it's okay i mean unless they're saying bad words i don't care if you have it in the background yeah right. yeah, yeah yeah this has been on my mind for a long time because i've been in the war since like 2016. Mm -hmm. new babies all the time well and and sometimes you know and of course, I would be the person to say, uh, to think that I know, I know how things should be done. Obviously, I don't, but I have my thoughts on things like that. It, and um, sometimes people just might be super busy and they just aren't seeing that. 
other times, maybe there are situations where there is great need and the ministering sisters just can't do it all. Like they just can't. Mm -hmm. And, and so maybe Heavenly Father is hoping that there are other sisters in the ward that just their hearts are touched and they think, oh, I could, I, I need to do this for sister so-and-so, you know, um, cause that's how it really should work. Right. It, it, mm -hmm. it shouldn't have to be organized and organized anything. It should just be, oh, I, in my prayers this morning, I felt like, you know, the basic story, right. I should take a loaf of bread over to sister so-and-so, right. Or I'm, I should take a box of jello and I don't even know why I'm taking it. And how silly is that? But that mom is like, oh, I wanted to make this thing and I can't get out to the store. And that's exactly the one thing that I'm missing from the recipe or something. I don't know. I don't know. I just think that moms need support. And I think, I, I believe that's what Mothers of Influence was created for. Because it doesn't always, uh, unless your heart is soft, you're not receptive to the spirit. Um, the well-educated heart, um, libraries of hope, but also other good and beautiful things soften mom's hearts and help them to be able to feel the spirit and respond to promptings about how to help somebody else or how to receive help from somebody else. I don't know. Thank you for mentioning that connection. It, it is really true that, you know, when your heart is soft, it, it affects every aspect of your, of your life, especially spiritually. Oh. And I think in this world, what we have done in the last little while is we've all kind of hardened our hearts like to protect ourselves or something. Um, or, or maybe your, your situation is just the stuff in your life that has happened, you've closed up. Uh, and I think a lot of times for women anyway, it's a, it's a defense thing, a protection thing. And Heavenly Father wants us to open our hearts and let him in. Because whatever's going on, um, whatever is happening, if you do that, you can receive the help that you need. Either just him helping you, comfort, support, whatever, give you direction, give you answers. Um, or you've opened yourself up and now he can... Um, inspire another mom another person to come and help you out okay cassie i want to see what you put um oh google the mom walk collective um, um moms a mom's get together walk group in many locations i haven't tried one yet but plan to next week seems like a good support group i love that and that's a thing that moms could do together right you can put your kids in the double jogger or whatever you know and um in the wagon something and go and walk with other moms and be able to have that healing kind of therapy and it it doesn't matter your age you can be grandmas and you still need that connection you still need a friend you still just need to get together with other women occasionally just for a moment and make a connection you know just feel supported so i love that thank you cassie for that resource Any other thoughts, ideas? Interesting how things, how topics move around, huh? And Seven, it was perfect that you were here today for that. Um, I'm for so that. glad. I was going to jump on at 11, then I had to throw out this important email. And afterwards, it was like 20. I'm like, should I go on? Then I, I was like, maybe I should make food. But then I was like, no, I'm going to go jump on. So I'm, like, I'm so glad, glad I did. you did really glad you did it's kind of a quiet day today people are a lot of people are going um out doing little family trips and things so but it's been so much fun to connect with um with lots of other people just lately it's been there have been so many different people that have kind of come back in to my you know my little circle and um and that's been really fun just to see what moms are doing and how they're feeling what's going on yeah seven sorry i just can't express my gratitude enough to your this online group because we have a little group but just with my family situation i can't really get out there a lot of time at night so i'm so so grateful for 
or just I don't know. This is feel like family. I can come here anytime to be nourished and to share. So thank you thank and you. everyone else too. Thank you. Isn't that a wonderful thing to come together and and really feel like like you said, like it's kind of like a little family. We do feel that kind of a connection. I love that. I my hippie vibe goes all the way out to when I'm out in public. I have visions of in of enchanted, you know, when they're all dancing and singing around the park. I think I've shared that before. But I'm I, I'm out there and I'm just thinking, you guys, we all know each other. Like we were all together at one point in time. We're all connected. Can we just be friendly and say hi? And if you feel like singing, you can sing. And if you like, if I go out and I'm listening to music and I'm walking in my neighborhood, there's some songs that just, I, you know, I want to move. <laughs> it's, I do a bad job of it, but still, it's still, I feel that desire, you know? And I think, why can't we do that? Why do we feel like, ooh? Like I still, and I will always remember, and I've referred to this one other time, but being in Home Depot and I hear singing on the other aisle, somebody's just singing. And um, I go around because I have to see who this person is, who this lovely, wonderful person is, who is just happy enough to sing out loud. And it was one of the workers and they were just singing. I just said, I have to tell you, that makes me so happy. Thank you. Just thank you for singing and brightening my day, you know? Um, anyway, I love it. That I love just this feeling, you know, this vibe. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That is beautiful, especially in Asian culture. People are super like self-conscious and you know don't want to be judged. If I'm not perfect or good at something, I'm not expressing at all. So after I moved to the US, I'm like, yeah, people, you can just live your life. But even here, like you said, people kind of tend to sometimes close up or not express as much. But it is a lot better than where I grew up. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that, you know, in our which mother influence were encouraged to, you know, to connect and to express. That's interesting, because that would be a big difference for you culturally to to find that. And Melanie, I love that Melanie said she's um sometimes the one that has to sing. I love it. That's so great. Oh, well, there are so many good things brewing, just so you know. I, I'm so excited about the things that are happening and that are getting ready to be um, shared. And um, there's just a lot of good things that are coming. Heavenly Father is preparing. It just, there's just a lot of good. Um, and I am behind on my recordings just because I was out of town. I didn't have access to any of my editing um, software. So I'll get the past recordings up, including last week where my cute oldest son came and talked with some of the moms about his homeschool experience and the transition into college and life and everything. And, um, and I, I think it was fun. I, I, so I'm excited to get that one out there and the other conversations. So I will do that later today. So they should be all up on the channel later if you guys want to see it. Um, my son made me laugh last time because he, he did the whole, okay, and like, and subscribe, hit that button. You know, he was doing, I was like, no, no, Ugh. anyway, but I just love knowing that we are all out here supporting each other. Even those, those pe moms that I never, I've never met you, but you still continue to watch the videos. And some of you send me little messages and I appreciate that. I love that we are able to connect in this way. So thanks for being here. I really, really appreciate you. And I love this discussion. It was really sweet. So if anyone wants to um, hang out afterwards, you're welcome to do that. But we will say goodbye until next Friday. <laughs>